welcome to Blinkers Off with your hosts, Jared Welch and Aaron Halterman. Good morning. What is up? I'm Jared Welch. He's Aaron Halterman. It is Thursday, March 14th, and this is Blinkers Off. What's up, man? What's up, man? I kind of like the morning show, honestly. I, 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 I would rather get it out of the way. So I like it, and... Good Lord, do we have a lot to talk about on the show today? It's going to be kind of wild. Well, you're a morning guy. You know, you yeah. you get you get half your your shit done before I'm even awake most of the time. So it's yep. like this is you know you said well, I told you I had to do it in the you know in the morning today, and you're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, Fine with fun. me. <laughs> we're gonna get, we're gonna get, we're gonna get the best version of you. I feel like right now. Oh, I don't know about the best, but yeah, you'll get a version <laughs> of me for sure. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of times it's either it's either midday, so you've gotten a few shows under your belt, or it's yep. the end of the day, and you're just like, let's get this over with, you know? So at least, you know, I'm getting a little bit of your first first thoughts of the day. Yep. 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 For sure. I think lately the last show's been dudes who bet sports and that's such an easy show for me so it's been nice to can i can just hit cruise control on that one because it's just my dad yelling about computers mostly right now <laughs> so it's no problem i just tell him something and he'll go on for 10 minutes about how computers are ruining your children and society and college <laughs> basketball so <laughs> i'd like to I'd like i'd like to clip by the way shoddy if you're listening i'd like to clip that little part out that he just said my dad <laughs> My dad bitching about computers. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I mean, but tr- also very true, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, let's not waste any time because, yes, we do have a lot to talk about today. It's weird because we don't really at the same time because there's no racing this weekend. I mean, there is racing, but there's no derby racing this weekend. Like, it's like, it's like the weirdest thing when you look at the schedule. You're like, why is there, why are we having this little reprieve? And if you and if you count last week, you haven't even been able to bet on a race uh, on a derby prep in a couple of weeks now. So, uh, we're one thing. It's weird that we don't have any racing this weekend as far as the derby goes, but it gives us an opportunity to kind of, you know, we we've had a couple of those breaks. You know, this is definitely the last one. I was thinking about that last night. I was like, this is easy. I mean, obviously, the last part of your you know spring where it's like before the derby, you know, this is it because that's now it's just going to be bang, 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 bang. And the next thing you know, we're going to be talking about the Kentucky Derby field. So yeah. this is it right here this weekend. But before we do that, what happened last weekend? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> we have to start with that. We're having fun. Uh, first of all, we have a gap because of Oakland Park. They changed the Rebel date, you know, and this used to be Rebel Weekend. Yeah. Um, so that, that's why we have the gap, but uh, are you like me? Like every time you think of, uh, like March madness and, uh, St. Patrick's day, I'm just thinking of some of the things like St. Patrick's day spring, really like just starting to turn. Like I always think of rebel. Yeah. No, I always sure. think of rebel. Like this is the time of the year. Oh, like in my mind. And when I start thinking about March madness first weekend, it's always, I'm always thinking of the rebel because it always seems like it used to correlate with that for the most part and so it is does a, it feels weird oh totally yeah and i think that's that's an adjustment that i still can't get used to uh so it is weird but yeah look i mean what happened last weekend there's just uh, there's absolutely no excuse for it none i don't want to hear any excuse about it uh i i compared it on uh dude too bad daily that the day after uh, my dad and i talked about it I kind of looked at it like this. I was like, look, uh, owning a website for as long as we have now, we know things can go down just like that for no reason. But to not have any sort of backup plan for this when it happened is borderline criminal. I'm not even going to say insanity. It's criminal. Um, and And I made an example. And you don't even know this, Jared. Our website crashed Thursday for like five minutes. But I made the example of it crashed. I I emailed the the people. They had no idea why it happened. But you know what they did? They fixed it like that. Because yeah. we, even we, have systems in place to when things go wrong, things get fixed. Now, maybe it takes them five minutes. Maybe it takes them 20 minutes. But the point is, we have someone we email and we type urgent in the email and they immediately are on it. 
how that can't happen with the tote system in this country is insane. If th that there's not, okay, everything is messed up. I don't know what is going on. Here's something we can go on with plan B. So at least we can take the wagers for now and then we'll, we'll get to whatever it is, but the problem has been fixed. That is embarrassing that that happened. I mean, flat out. I said, it, I said it Sunday. It's the worst thing I've ever seen in the sport because at the end of the day, all the problems with the sport, the one thing that can't happen is not allowing people to bet on a race. That is insane. Like that is cr criminal. It's not insane. It's criminal. They, my favorite part about it was the next day, how, of course, in typical fashion, we pass the blame, you know, like the oh, immediately yeah. the Amtote uh, and RCN, which is Robert's communication, like immediately took no responsibility for it. Yep. Everyone needs to stop blaming Amtote, said Todd Roberts, president and CEO of RCN. <laughs> this is an unprecedented failure in the primary and backup connectivity provided by to RCN by our third party suppliers. So basically they're saying yeah. blame the third party suppliers. That's why this happened. And. Mm. To your point, because, it, you know, that's been one of, I don't even know how many crashes we've had over the years, right? And we've mm -hmm. had some on the worst times, you know, mm -hmm. Breeders' Cup, Derby, you name it, like crashes. It happens. It sucks. It happens. But we have systems in place to fix it as fast as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. And that's not even that important. This is literally driving the whole industry. Yep. The entire industry is being driven by Amtote and the the ability to bet on the horses. The whole thing. I, and you don't have a a backup plan that that you and, and even if you, you you can't get it back up in in an hour, however long it was, like it's just it's wild. Yeah. It is, and, and and honestly, it it didn't even surprise me. I mean, it no. surprised me that it happened, but it didn't surprise me the way it was handled, because no. I was like, oh yeah, well of course, like uh, you yeah, know, oh it's not gonna take it's gonna take forever, or we or it's so ar archaic that we don't have an ability to fix this. Like yeah, that sounds about right for horse racing. That I mean, if it happens in the NFL for what it, like like yeah, you're like wow, I cannot even fathom that they didn't have something set up for this. But for us, it's kind of like. Yeah, that kind of checks out. It, to me, it's like if you're if you're getting ready to play an NFL game and all the scoreboards go out, right? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? I, I maybe this isn't a good example, but let's say scoreboards or just think of something that would prevent you from playing the game electronically. I don't yeah. know what it is. Short of the whole city has lost power, there's like there's no way they wouldn't find a way to get the game going. And that's that's anywhere. That's hockey. That's that's anything. They would find a way, and it would be fairly quick. Like I said, short of everything, it, it, the one excuse you would have is, "Hey, the power is completely out." Like if all through Tampa, the yeah. power was out. Yeah. I get it. There's nothing you can do. But for people to pass the buck around here, there, and everywhere, it stops real quick. If if you are on my website and it's not working. It's my fault and it's that guy's fault. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's no other people to blame. And yeah, we use a third party stuff, uh, things for a lot of things. You have to. But it's also your responsibility to understand okay, something's messed up with my current system. I have to do plan B, plan C. And trust me, it, if we call our people and they're like, well, there's nothing we can do. We got this server's just messed up. We're going to say, get it to another one as quick as possible, right? Like, and we are a small entity compared to the entire, obviously, the entire betting system of horse racing. There isn't, there is no excuse that 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 is valid. Minus the power is completely gone. It, it, it just doesn't. I mean, I can't even, I can't even understand. Yeah, Travis, good point. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. Like, you remember the Super Bowl when the power went out, like right after halftime, I think it was, or yep. you know, and. Uh, with the Niners and uh, the Ravens, right? And uh, yeah, it's like, oh, you know, it's just like they fixed it, you know? And I get like, that's a, like, we can't really know they, they compare the two, but 
it, it's still it's like you have to have it and again like that's not even that it, it, comparing to what happened with the with horse racing that's not even that major because that's like the lights but like what if you i, I mean again it's hard to come up with a, a comparison but like this is literally the whole thing this is it like they can't run a race without betting on it they did they had to because the horses were just circling around like listen like let's either fuck off or let's do this thing you know like that's about what they you know but like with you have to have if can you imagine like it's like okay listen everything that we do for a living for this weekend or whatever is riding on this thing working yep and then we're like it does we don't have you know and then it goes down and you're like I don't know. I don't know. I didn't didn't think that would ever happen. And can you imagine? Let's say our website crashes all weekend. All weekend it's gone, right? Which is essentially what happened to Tampa. And by the way, I feel terrible for Tampa. But anyway, it it's gone. Yeah, website- I think I let me preface one thing. Yeah, like Tampa. At first, I was bl- not only blaming Tampa, but I was like, oh, you know, Tampa. But then once I learned more about it, yeah, I was like, okay, this is not Tampa's fault. Right. This sucks for Tampa. Like, I feel awful because this is like smaller track, their biggest day of the year, biggest race of the biggest day of the year, and it goes down. Well, but, they need to file a lawsuit or something because they've lost out on probably five, eight million dollars because of this. So they 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 oh, yeah. they, they need yeah. to file a lawsuit. But anyway, can you imagine our website's down all weekend and all of our customers can't access their paid products? And then they can comp- they start complaining. Uh, they should complain, obviously. And we write back, don't blame us. It was a third party thing. We can't do anything about it. First of all, how irate would the customer be? And second of all, how stupid would we be to write that? Like we would be like, I'm so sorry. I can't believe this happened. We've added two days onto your account. We've given you free days. All this stuff. We would have to do that. And we would do that because that's the right thing to do. But it in this sport, and you said it, everybody's just like. Oh, it's not me. Oh, it's not me. Oh, it's not me. It's not my fault. Too bad, basically, is what they're telling all their customers. Ah, too bad. I can't do anything about it. It's like this yeah. is crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's uh and then there was the whole like the issue with the payouts that you know, because that's not, not like it was just that race, right? It was the pick fours and pick fives and things leading up to that race, and just mm-hmm. just a total nightmare of, of how it was handled. And then not to mention the race, like the race sucked going into it. It just felt like, you know, it's almost like, why are we even watching it? And then, well, you know, we'll bet it and stuff because it's, and it's like, well, we can't bet it now. <laughs> and so then you're like, it just felt like it was like a double whammy because the race, I mean, domestic product wins, no more time. It was a blanket finish, bunch of slow horses. It felt like, like just really nothing that came from that day really yeah i mean it was it it was a bad race i i I don't think there's any way around it i mean you look at good money and you look at no more time two horses good money on the lead no more time right behind them they set incredibly slow fractions and so when they turn for home i'm like all right these two horses here in the front are probably just going to run away with it we're going to see a nice stretch battle between these two horses that simply did not happen they did not kick away whatsoever you look behind it's like here's domestic product kind of open up there and it's like okay well i guess he's gonna win and it was a blanket finish like you said i I, magic told me it's the slowest tampa bay derby in like the last 30 years time wise it was awful now okay one of the things i will say though is they did walk around in a circle for like an hour before this race maybe it took something out of them i don't know but it was a bad race there's no doubt how long did they actually walk around? It was a long time. I really don't know the exact time, but it felt like forever. Like I was watching a race. I'd come back. They're still walking. So I go, okay, I'll go watch this race. Go wherever, San Anita or whatever. Come back. They're still walking around. It, it felt like forever. I was trying to w- check in on it because, again, I had it was so my weekend in, in with the boys, and I was trying to check on it, and I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Then I would look back again. It would still not be going. And then you couldn't, the odds weren't, you know, were working and stuff too. So you're like, what? Yeah. What? You know, so I didn't really have a full understanding. Was it live? Was it like that same feeling? 
Like, oh, or or were you like you guys knew you understood that, that what the issue was? No, I mean, I I think we didn't understand anything other than the tote board isn't or or like the tote system isn't working right, and so I. I kept getting messages from people and be like, why can't I bet the 11th at Tampa? And then the next year it's like the 11th at Tampa won't let me bet, you know? And I'm like, well, I, I, I'm not like the ADW. I, I don't know. Like maybe call them. I have no idea. I don't work customer service for them, but I kept <laughs> like over and over and over what's going on. Why can't I bet? And so that's what alerted me uh, about it as at first. And then, so I was like, all right, well let's get on there. And it's like, yeah, no, I can't do anything. And so, but it was just speculation. It just said tote delay the whole time. And then finally they're like, okay, we're running it as a non-wagering event. And that's when people lost their minds. Uh, and then the 12th race obviously was canceled. Um, so, and then the, like all the pick five players are like, what, what the hell I'm at live? What's going to happen here? Cause it, the 11th was actually the last leg of the pick five. And I just kept saying, I, I don't, I don't know. This is weird. Like, I, I think you're going to get be an all race, you know, that's about the only thing they can do. And that's what they did. But, you know, so, di- so disappointing. So disappointing. Um, well, we won't go, we won't just keep beating it here because mm-hmm. it's just like, hopefully we have better days ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we do have nothing to talk about this weekend in for, terms of what's running this weekend, but we do have a big show today lined up where we will look at the upcoming, the last, really, the last stretch here of 2024 Championship Series, Kentucky Derby Championship Series races, including the eight 100-point races that begin next week. What? Where are the horses pointing to? Who's a potential derby favorite as we sit here mid-March? I think we might answer some of these questions. I don't know, but uh, let's get to it. Let's go. Will we know the Kentucky Derby favorite before an hour before the race? I don't know. We'll see. I, uh, I've i got these probables pulled up, so we'll see. You tell us. <laughs> you tell me, I should say, who's going to be the, the winner. Don't put that on me. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Got to put it on somebody. Well, if you're if you're uh, the to- am tote, you do right. Right, exactly. Yes. See, that's someone it. Else? Yeah. If 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 my picks do bad today, it's not my problem. So it's definitely someone else's fault. Right. Yeah. It's the cats or something. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a look there. We can count out the the Tampa Bay. They didn't scratch that one out yet, but. Waterloo. Jeff Ruby, Louisiana Derby, UA Derby, Florida Derby, Arkansas, Wood, Bluegrass, San Samita. Is, it, is Lexington going to be important this year? It should be. I feel like you might get a horse or two coming out of that. Maybe. I mean, I think the Lexington would have, well, may have produced a Preakness hit the board type last year if he hadn't gotten hurt. So, Oh, well, yeah, totally. So I, I think it should be important. I don't I don't know though. Maybe not. How do I get this to be? Here, I'll just remove that. I see a lot of people in the chat that had like bets going into that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. It just sucks. Yeah. It was gettable uh, to get there for sure. And uh, yeah. And I think a lot of people are pissed because they may have put in some bets early uh, that would have been winners in the Tampa Derby. Like a lot of people will bet the race three or four races before, you know, and, you come back, you, maybe you didn't even know what happened. You go, you watch the race. You're like, well, where's my payout? Like I had that exacta, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the other thing too. That's, that's so frustrating about this sport is, is, well, it just seems like it never ends, but like with every, with, uh, with every new thing that comes along, it's like, if you compare it to other things, you know, you can bet, you know, Halterman, you can, you can put a pick in for hockey 
and you might have something that comes up that morning or that night and, and, you know, you and Heather go out to eat or whatever. And it's like, well, I'll check on it later. Like I can't, you're not, maybe you're degenerate a lot of the times, but you can't be like on it every time. Right. No, no. It's like, okay, it's fine. Like it'll, it'll run or they'll, they'll play. I'll check yeah. and I'll check in on it. Like you, you can't even depend on that in horse racing. Where you you could just be like, hey, uh, uh, you know, I had, I had shit going on. You know, a lot not everybody not everybody can just sit there and, and watch every race all day on a Saturday. I mean, right? So it's like, hey, I put maybe I put my bets in early or whatever, and then I got you know I'll come check later. And it's like you can't even do that now. You can't even depend on doing that because now you're like, what happened? Why? What happened with my bets? It's just I- it, it. It's like we want to pretend that we're a sport. When in reality, I don't even know that we're a sport anymore. Like I, I don't. It's, it, it just we, like you can't compare because it puts it puts a bad look on the other sports if you compare us to other sports because it's just like all this time I've always wanted to be like we're you know we're a sport too. Like this is a sport, you know. This is like I, we're just like you know all you know NFL and baseball and all that. It's like no, we're not. Mm-mm. I I don't think the show's long enough to get into all this to be completely. I mean. Yeah, sorry. I kind of, I, I'm kind of releasing some steam there because I'm like, it's just, I'm just so frustrated with it. Well, I, to your point, you know, I, I, I've, I've been doing a real good amount of hockey betting, and it's like, yeah, I can. Heather and I were talking about this as we were driving home from dinner one night. <laughs> oddly enough, that you brought that up, it's like, I know when I bet this hockey game at nine thirty in the morning, I'm getting plus whatever. I'm, I bet on it. And that's it. Right. And then, but if I bet this horse at nine 30 in the morning, yeah, I may get two to five when he's two to one, I may get, you know, four to five, I may get whatever. And so again, as a new to, to attract new gamblers, people that are gamblers and you say, Hey, I know you like to bet sports. Come over here to this side. They're going to, that shit's going to happen to them once and they're gone. And I don't blame them. Yep. So yeah, there's there. I mean, that fundamentally, that's probably the biggest barrier to entry in horse racing. Uh, I mean, because like the whole point of like, like last line, I bet the Nashville Predators at plus 135. Well, if I got them at plus 135 and then the puck dropped, and all of a sudden I look at my, you know, virtual ticket on my phone and I have them at minus 200. Well, then I don't want them anymore. Why would I do that? I bet them because I think they should at plus 135. I think that's a great bet, but not at minus 200. So how do you explain that to a, to a new horse better that's, that's experienced in betting that could maybe drive our handle? You can't. It, you, you simply cannot because it's like, you try to explain this sport to anybody and there we go. That's better that it's like, they're like, why? I don't get it. You know, like, and you're like, it used to, I used to be mad about it, but now I'm like, yeah, I get it. I know. Well, like, well, the barriers of entry to horse racing are very steep to begin with because of how complicated yeah, it is of to course. handicap a race. Right. Yeah, just to understand what you're even trying to do. Right. So getting people over that initial hump of I can look at this hieroglyphic thing and understand it is hard. <laughs> yeah. But I think for betters, there is some attraction of I can bet a little and make a lot. But and you can't really do that in sports. Like I like I said, I took the Nashville Predators last night at plus 135. You're not gonna get much more than that on a logical winner in sports where horses that you could get two to one on a very logical horse all day long, but that, okay. I finally understood this game. Now I, I don't understand how I just bet a horse. that's two to one going into the gate. And now the horse is three to five. Yeah. Is it? it okay. So uh, and again, I didn't mean to like over reopen this thing, but it's like you're right because I remember when we started going and any, when we bring new people to the game, it, it's it, they're it's so hard to even get started. But 
it's like okay you it, at the very least like okay like if you're a better you're like okay i i understand i understand i finally figured out the, the form i understand how to read the form i understand what a workout means i understand like i i have a pretty good like all the things that you kind of need to know to be quote unquote successful and obviously it's very hard to be successful in this game but to be the best you could be it you know you know and then it's like okay but now i can't even place my bet or now i i i like this horse but i have to be here at at zero minutes to post as we're walking in the gate and even then i may not get the price that is showing on the screen yeah and it just becomes like you've got everything in line air you've done everything right you've set it up you've 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 got the exact the you've you've maxed out the the most you can bet or that you can make right yeah from a betting standpoint you couldn't do it better but yet you still can't get a good understanding of of if you should bet that horse or that race or whatever because of the it's really not anyone's fault other than the game you know because you just what are you supposed to do and it and it becomes inc- like we see this dude we see it in emails we see it in uh, on social media, people reaching out to us, like you name it, of people that are increasingly becoming more and more frustrated by just the things that you they can't control in the game. We, yeah, I mean, we get, if you type in like horse racing picks on Google, we're one of the first ones, thankfully, to pop up. So we get a lot of new people that are trying it out, they, they come to our site. Right. And like you said, some of them will reach out to us and be like, I, I don't quite understand this, this, and this. And so you kind of do develop a little bit of a back and forth with the person you're trying to help them out, you know, and, um, it, it usually gets to a point for a lot of them where they go, well, how in the hell is a horse two to one and goes three to five when they come out of the gate? Or how did I bet the horse at 10 to one and they're three to one coming out of the gate? And then you have to explain, well, there's these computers and all this. And by that time, they're just like, yeah, I'll probably just go back to football or baseball. Yeah. And not to just keep going on this, but Sylvain brings up a great point. When I get up in the morning and handicap hockey and put my hockey plays up, I just go to ESPN and just kind of look at the matchups and that's it. It's free. I do whatever, you know, this sport everything you you know just to find the information on them you had to pay for it so it's like what what's gonna happen like what are we really expecting to happen with the sport hey david um yeah i know it's uh it's because you know we and that's just it like there's so many you have you have buddies that they'll be like well how do i you, you might because like you you and i we might want to talk about it to somebody that's not us Right. And they're like, oh, cool. Well, how how do I bet it? Well, now you can't, right? Because mm-hmm. they killed that in Missouri again. Um, but it's it's like even even if you can bet in a legal state, it's like, oh well, um, um actually you you need to you can't you gotta get an app and then you gotta download this app and you gotta put you know, you gotta have an account. And then it's like Fuck, I don't wanna do all that. Never mind. You know, yeah. it's just like or you got to have this, you got to have that. Oh, it might be on this, but then it's not going to show it because they don't like Churchill Downs or whatever. It's just, it's, I don't know. It almost makes you wonder how you even like the sport, how you even got into it because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just becoming so, and so frustrated, so frustrating, yeah. I should say, yeah. to even follow it. Well, I'll say, they'll say this and then I'm, I'm done. Okay. But okay. this is, We'll be done. I want everybody to really think about this. Okay. The Visa Network. We have a buddy who is a host of their two o'clock show, and he does a great job, Patrick. I'm on there once a week and I send videos into them every day with a sports pick. They call me the racing dude. They they talk about our website on their racing news, racing news. This guy's great at horse racing. Other than their Kentucky Derby show, never, ever once have they ever brought up on air anything about horse racing. And this is a 24-7 network dedicated solely to betting. They never have asked me ever. And on top of that, they hired Mike Somich, 
who also works for us as well and is also a nationally known horse racing name. Never have they asked him one horse racing question outside of the Kentucky Derby. 24-7 betting coverage. Folks. We'll talk about all two, kind of betting. two people that have made their living in horse racing. One is employed by them. One gets to go on one of the shows. Never, ever, 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 other than the Derby, have they ever even mentioned that we might bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. And, okay, I'll, I'll let the last, and the part, the other part to it is, think about, we've talked about this, this will be the, you said your last piece, I'll say sure. mine. Okay. And then we'll move on to actual derby talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to have, we should have done a show just dedicated on bashing the sport. But, um, it, you guys need to understand too that because of the sad nature of our, sport and industry that what halterman is saying is probably a good thing because think about it for a second if we were getting the kind of coverage that we all long for you know what we wish we got in the in the game and you know that you would turn on sports center and you'd see highlights from uh the travers or or the arkansas derby or whatever right we all that wish that but if that was the case We'd be shut down years ago <laughs> from the drugging, from the breakdowns, from the. Ba- Can you imagine if the if like this was like a national national thing, like like even even like tennis level, where it's like all of a sudden you couldn't bet the race. It would be an uproar, and mm-hmm. so it's like it kind of is good that we don't have that exposure that we wish we had, because if we did, it'd probably be even worse off. It's almost like if you give the keys to the car to your kid, what do you think will happen? Yeah. He's probably going to drive it into the, into the house, you know? Yeah. And so it just feels like we, we want, I, I used to be that way. And I think we all have been that way at some point where you wish like, man, this could be bigger. This needs to be bigger. Like, why is pe- more people not watching this? Why- Imagine if we could have this exposure. And then you're like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't. We were talking about, you know, it's amazing that horse racing stayed alive during COVID, you know, and thank God it did because that, that's – the fact of it is if COVID didn't happen, this, this industry would be even worse off. But we got a lot of new people, and some of them stayed, and thank you for doing that. If, you, if you're one of those – we really appreciate it and hope you stay around forever. But it was like, well, the, one of the main reasons it survived is the big wig people that were shutting things down didn't know horse racing existed. So they didn't <laughs> try to shut it down. You can't exactly sneak in an NHL or NBA game, right? But horse racing, a lot of these people, they didn't know what was going on. And when they did, they tried and they couldn't really do a ton about it. But a lot of people didn't know about that horse racing was still going on. <laughs> So that's a, that's a, don't think that wasn't a big reason why it st- stuck around because it was. Well, well, sir, uh, are the, the jockeys, what about the jockeys? Uh, are you worried about, it's like, what, what, what jockeys? What are you talking my, about? My lawn ornaments? What are you talking <laughs> <Yeah>. about? <laughs> those, those, those exist still? <laughs> ah, we'll just let it go. <laughs> that's too much work. I'm worried about this. So yeah, I mean. Yeah, good good point. Um, all right, guys, let's let's get on. Okay, so let's. Yeah. It is what it is. We can't. We can sit here and bitch about it all we want. Um, obviously, you guys know how we feel about it, but we do have racing to talk about. This uh, this uh, you know we we are it. This is it. This is the the last stretch into the twenty twenty four Kentucky Derby. Kentucky Derby one fifty, by the way. Uh, again, we had this, this Tampa Bay Derby last week. We've gotten into that. Don't need to talk about it anymore. Uh, but next week we begin the stretch that becomes kind of the, the mad dash, the hundred point races into the Kentucky Derby, the Jeff Ruby stakes, the Louisiana Derby, uh, will be next week, followed by the UA Derby, the Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby the week after. And then that last weekend, you have the Wood Memorial, the Bluegrass and the Santa Anita Derby. You do have the Lexington the following weekend, excuse me, April 13th, but that's a 20-point race. So 
eight races left, eight big races left, you're basically looking at other than the, well, I guess it just depends on where Bob sends some of his horses. If he sends them outside of, of Santa Anita, but you're basically looking at two horses per race, at least that are going to be getting in the Kentucky Derby that aren't, that could possibly not be in it already, but likely two per race. Cause you're getting hundred points and 50 points for the top two. Santa Anita Derby, obviously Bob Baffert probably run one to whoever he runs in there and uh, steal those points. But, all right, so let's uh, – I guess let's do this, like, race by race. You want to? Yep. All right, so we'll just go down the list of what's uh, listed first here in the Jeff Ruby stakes. And we, we've kind of been seeing over the last couple of years, we've talked about this a lot on the show, it's not necessarily turning into a, a, a waste of a race anymore. No. I think you are seeing some decent horses come out of this circuit uh, in the last couple of years. And and do you think that's going to stay the way, stay the same this year? Well, it'd be interesting to see who shows up. So Encino was the impressive winner of the John Battaglia, but they're saying he's going to go to the bluegrass. So that kind of leaves it open a little bit here. The probables epic rise, uh, epic ride, excuse me, sees the gray moonlight endlessly noted common defense record time agate road. And then Tennessee, those are the, uh, not the whole state, but the horse or the probables for the, that race. Based on those probables, I don't know that we're going to see anything incredible in this race. But I've also kind of heard Nash was supposed to go there, and now he's listed for the Louisiana Derby. So there's kind of some back and forth talk here. I I think if Encino was here, that's one I, I'm pretty serious about, as uh, serious as you could be about any of these right now. I think you'd say this is a huge race. With that lineup that I just read, I'm not so sure. Yeah. It, we're, I mean, I, I, the one thing about it, like, I'm not going to really get too over the moon about this race until I kind of, like, like that's the way it was last year for me. It was like, well, I wasn't too excited about it or believed that it was going to be too productive until I actually watched the race and then saw, like, to me, what looked like a really good horse, you know, like mm -hmm. regardless of surface. So uh, to me, this is one of those very much wait and see races. Yeah, I agree. I, and I think as we read off all these, every one of them don't, I mean, you better watch it because this is so wide open. So don't judge a book by its cover, I guess. See what the race, yeah, yeah. how it unfolds. Yeah. And it kind of feels like that's, the case for a big chunk of these races, right? All of them, all uh, every one of them. Yeah, I mean, really, honestly, dude, it, yep. it, it has to be all of them, right? Yep. Um, we're gonna do this on all of them, so uh, I, I guess I'll just leave them at two and a half. I'll just do two and a half for every one of them, other than maybe the San Diego Derby. We'll do two and a half, just because it is you're getting technically two horses into the gate with uh, with uh the top two finishers of these races. So two and a half horses will be the, the, the line for all these final preps over under Halterman that get into the starting gate of the Kentucky Derby out of the Jeff Ruby. I would say under in the Je Jeff Ruby under as well. I think just yeah. historically, it's hard to say you're going to get three horses out of there. So mm -hmm. definitely go with the under there. All right, let's go to, uh, I mean, one of the, bigger it's definitely one of the bigger prep races the final prep races we have the louisiana derby at the fairgrounds uh you know the one of the longest as well but uh, the ua derby and then that one being the mile 316 so you do have a lot of times trainers aiming for that race that that wouldn't think their horses want to go longer so thoughts on this one let's see the field yeah louisiana derby right now we've got Nash, who also could go to the Jeff Ruby, so we'll kind of see what happens there. Catching Freedom, Track Phantom, B Dancer, Tuscan Gold, Common Defense, Lat Long, Honor Marie, Hall of Fame, and Real Men Violin. Now, you know, Hall of Fame may go Arkansas Derby. You know, Tuscan Sky is a possible horse as well. So there's a there's you know a little bit of guesswork here on this one, but yeah, look, I I think. What is track phantom and can catching freedom run straight? I think are the two biggest question marks coming into this one. Um, you know, honor Marie can, can he kind of bounce back after a poor effort on debut? If hall of fame is here, I don't know, maybe, you know, that's another one, uh, that, 
it's like, okay, will we be able to kind of bounce back and, uh, you know, and run a, a better race than he did that last time out after the hype, this one has to be a, one of the better ones, right? I mean, historically it is right. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it produces, seems like year after year. Um, it's funny that Nash won't go away. It, it it almost feels like, and I and I don't necessarily believe it, but it almost feels like he is gonna win one of the, like he's gonna be like, like oh you know, like oh we he we thought always well, knew he was good. He just needed to figure it out kind of thing. Is this like is this this he's not ever doing enough to be like no nah, he's not on the Derby Trail anymore. So yeah, he, and, and it's not like. I mean, it's not like we've seen, I guess, Sierra, if Sierra Leone is Sierra Leone going to the bluegrass, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't have, you know, him. And, and it's just that I still feel like that circuit is something that we need to figure out without him in any ways. It, it's, it's weird because without Sierra Leone, you know, uh, you would have track Phantom who's would have won all three of them. Right. I mean, he just got beat late by Sierra Leone. So track Phantom certainly is the number one, like horse in Louisiana locally. Yeah. So I think it's like, okay, Sierra Leone beat him. Now will three or four other horses beat him in this one, or will he win again? You know, so I, I think he's kind of the key to kind of kind of look at uh, there. But yeah, I mean, I I am I've said it a lot. I said I think Track Phantom does everything the right way. I just don't know that he's that good. You know, and that's the biggest problem of all. You could do things the right way, but if you're not very good, then it's not going to matter in the bigger races. So can he? What will he do? Is I think the big question. He's been the most, and you've kind of said this before, I know, but like this, he's been probably the most consistent horse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe of the, all the horses of yeah. the whole, of the whole top 20, if you want to say, you know, like he's kind of shown up every time. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like, is he very good? I, to me, if he was good, if he was really good, he would have won the last race. Honestly, he set slower fractions and he got beat, you know, by a horse that was coming from way from the back. So I think if he kicks on, he's good. And listen, I, I said it a lot and it's not a popular opinion, really, but I didn't think the Risen Star was that good of a race visually is like, I don't I don't know. But again, it was a terrible sloppy track and it was dark and it's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just funny that it's dark. You can barely see him and it's a huge race. But uh, anyway, <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I kind of was like, yeah, all the horses in that race. Let's see what they do next out. I think that's when it's really going to matter. If you go back and look last year's running. I mean, last year's running did have Kings Barnes and Disarm were both in the Derby. Yeah. Jesus Road, he was he in? He was in, right? I think maybe, maybe he scratched in? out of it. Scratched I out. I mean, yeah, he was in, I can't though. remember. Yeah. Um, but really, before that, you had really a couple of years there. Epicenter, obviously, and Hot Rod Charlie, two really pretty good horses. I mean, Epicenter mm -hmm. obviously couldn't get the job done uh, in a couple tries that probably should have, but. You know, and Hot Rod Charlie ran well in both the Derby and the in the Belmont, really. Mm -hmm. um, so it it certainly has turned into to me. It's turned into one of those races that is highly productive. You know, you had you know with that year you had Mandaloon in it, you had Hot yeah. Rod, you had Midnight Bourbon, uh, Proxy was in that year's running, and then with the Epicenter you you had Epicenter, yeah. Zozos, Pioneer Medina. Um, Rattle and roll. So that one was a little bit top heavy, right? Mm -hmm. with, with Epicenter. Mm -hmm. But it definitely feels like you're going to get at least somewhat of an answer, you know? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. It's just like you're going to find out a little bit here. So, yeah. Um, I think I'll go over. Yeah, I'd go over two and a half. I, I think. You know, there's a couple that, you know, like Track Phantom can still run in the Derby. If he runs last in this race, he's probably yeah. going to get in. So I, I would go over in this one. Catching Freedom. I mean, really, you just need. And then, if, yeah, give me over. It's been a productive, for the most part, it's been a pretty productive race over the years. Give me yeah. over. All right, let's go to uh, the same day. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the next weekend, the UAE Derby. UA Derby, this one is going to be very, like, all or nothing a little bit with me. It's like, 
what is forever young man like what is this horse is, is this horse the derby favorite is he not even at the derby is what is he it's probably the biggest race uh, of that weekend, you know, when you get right down to it, as far as Derby prep goes, because uh, you got the Florida Derby, you do have the Arkansas Derby on the same day. But to me, Forever Young is going to be a real key to this thing. Um, personally, I hope he romps because I, st I still don't believe in him <laughs> that much and I want him to take a lot of money. Um but I hope he doesn't romp too much where I start believing in him, I guess. <laughs> so wait, to be so careful. It's going to be weird. Don't get, don't get tap at Trice. I know. I know. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. Can we, can we make that a thing? Don't get tap at Trice. Don't get tap at Trice. I think that is definitely a thing for sure. Don't, don't go to the bluegrass and be like, wow, that was so much better than he's ran. He's getting so much better. And then that was the only race that he ran professionally his whole career. But let's go back to the <laughs> totally. UAE Derby. <laughs> totally. Cause I, last week when I was doing the, the, uh, when I was putting up to putting together the, the pod, I used the audio from last year's Tampa Bay Derby. Like, they're, if you guys listen to the pod version, I always typically do, like, hey, they're off in the Tampa Bay Derby. They're off, whatever. And I watched uh, the Tampa Bay Derby. And I was like, how? And I texted you immediately. But I was like, how did we ever like this horse? Yep. And then you're like, well, go watch the bluegrass and you'll remember why. And then, of course, you, you realize that. But it's like, it's it was so biased by the what we'd seen recently versus because that yep. Tampa Bay race was just so bad. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, it was garbage. Uh, yeah, stupid, really dumb. But again, I I, I just bought into this. Well, he's goofy, but he is really starting to figure it out, and he looked like he was. But anyway, this race, yeah. Look, I don't know of any other horse in this race that's really targeting the Kentucky Derby. So now that could change if one of them wins it, obviously, right? To be like, well, yeah, we were in it all along, right? So I don't know what happens outside of Forever Young as far as the Derby is concerned. What I will tell you, and I'll thank the Discord, uh, some people that, uh, you know, I, I, Rodney and, and, and Shoddy, and I believe uh, Curtis uh, Manlow was in that conversation as well on Monday or Tuesday. They're talking about horses in this race. And so it got me watching a lot of replays. There's some really good horses in this race. So it, if Forever Young like dusts some of these horses, mm -hmm. it's going to mean something this year. Now, you know, again, they're internationals, so maybe some of them don't want the dirt, like Aiden's horse might not want the dirt, things like that. But it's still a it's a it's a very talented group. So I do think we'll learn something. Hopefully, if Forever Young gets beat, the winner does come over because I do think they're deserving horses for the Derby in this one. Yeah, I mean, I fell into the, the uh, that trap last year with the with the Aiden horse. Um, can't even think of the name now, but uh, the horse that was trying the dirt. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it definitely. I feel like if, I mean, again, we would have a handful of races left um, for the trail, but given the year, given there's no Bob Baffert, if he wins and does it. If he wins at all, but if he does it any kind of Mendelssohn type effort, like that's your favorite. Yeah. I don't think I, I would be shocked if he's not. I agree. But again, based on what has happened this season, and, he'll and definitely only be based, the favorite. Not me saying like I think he is the favorite. I think that's the betting. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm not gonna sit here and say like I that's my best horse, but based off that, based off the Japanese, based off what we've seen over here. All those things aligned. I think he'll be the favorite. I think you're right. I, I agree. Uh, and, and because he already has that hype anyway, right? Yeah. Like he, yeah. he's not like Derma Sotagate really. Okay. For people hardcore in a horse racing, they knew who he was. Right. But like people that are not, it, it, it would be Derma Sotagate. I've never heard of this horse. And I saw him in the UAE Derby, you know, and so he didn't have that steam to maybe become the favorite after that race. Plus we actually had some horses to bet over here this year. It's it, yeah. He's going to be, if not the favorite, if he rolls, he's going to be heavily, heavily bet. Yeah. I just think people are desperately trying to find anybody. And if you see that performance, plus add in the fact, like you said, all the hype around it and the fact that everyone's like, the whole thing of like Japanese, you know, Japan's going to win one of these eventually and who's the horse. And it's, it just kind of feels like that's the one. Um, yeah. I, 
Mark, I I think he'll be close, but I, I just think, you, especially considering the the the, the Japanese, just the Jap. I mean, if if you're talking about this horse running over here uh, or being not a, you know from Japan, like that's one thing. But I just think that factor is going to have more impact than Sierra Leone. Well, it depends on. It's like Mark saying, if, if Sierra Leone dominates, I, I don't know that he's that type that's going to like do a crazy like length win. And we'll get to in a second, it might be one of the tougher preps. And so you're, I, I think if Sierra Leone was a dominant winner of the bluegrass, he's going to be the favorite. But I guess maybe we're kind of speculating that maybe he, even if he wins, it might not be in a dominant effort, so to speak. And again, we are, we are, at least I'm saying that this is based off of, if forever young were to roll, you know, if right. he did a Mendelssohn type UAE Derby where he just ran off the screen kind of thing to me, if, if it's a race like last race, no, no. he wins, but it's just kind of like, yeah, that was good, but nothing to like get super pumped about. I don't think he would be the favorite unless all these other horses bomb. Right. Agreed. Um. All right. I guess it's gotta be under, right? UAE Derby has gotta be under. I, I think it's under, yeah. I think I think we get the winner, and that's sometimes we'll get the second place for us, but I think we just get the winner. And and Mark, dude, like you're right. I I completely agree. Like Mendelssohn, Lonnie, Dermis, like those are horses that did not do well. And and I think from a betting standpoint, I I don't have any problem with. And in fact, I think I'd be on that on that boat of being like, you know what, they can. Like when it happens, great, but that can like, I'll bet against it until it does, you know, kind of thing. But I, yeah. But it, I'm but from a betting like think about them all the money Mendelssohn took. And and that was with Justify. Yeah. Derma took money. I mean, yeah. I don't I, I don't remember what Lonnie did, but I don't think he took a lot of money. But still the point is like I think we're we're just begging for these horses, the Japanese horses to win. And people yeah. want to be you know, like they're they're just assuming this is going to happen eventually, and right? So that hype continues to roll there, especially when a horse like Forever Young comes in that people have known about for a long time. Yeah, right. And I think as far as and again a blanket statement that probably shouldn't be made because we don't we just don't know what's going to how this is going to unfold. But I'm kind of to the point of I'm not picking them to win. If I can throw him on the pick five or something, then you that's something you make well. He can beat me to win, but pick five ticket. If I'm live, maybe he's on it, you know, but that's probably yeah. the extent of it for me. I just, and I get the whole, oh, he's got a lot of talent and, and hyping him up. And, but man, it's, these horses just have not done much when, in the Derby after yeah. that race. That's Thunder Snow is brutal. I mean, that's just a, I mean, yep. cause they, cause Thunder Snow was such a good horse. Like it's not like, you know, John White picked Thunder Snow that year and, and, you know, was, was pretty bold on that call. And, and, uh, you know, of course, like the horse went on to win, uh, the Dubai world cup twice. Right. right. Didn't he win twice? Yes. So it's like, yes. he's obviously a good horse. He was a good horse. He was a great horse. And it's just, just bad luck. Didn't whatever, but, yeah. uh, it's just, you know, you don't even know what he would have done in the Derby that year. So, right. Nope. Um, all right, let's go to the next one here. Let's go to the uh, two on the state side, the Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby. Florida Derby, Alterman, got to, uh, I assume, produce something, uh, right? I, what is this going to do? Is he going to be the f favorite, or is he going to be in the race at all? <laughs> well, here's what we have. This Florida circuit has been funky, let's call it, right? So Dornock is listed as a probable. He's probably going to the bluegrass though. Um, Victory Avenue, he's scratched out of the fountain of youth. I, I don't know. He's he's listed as a possible. Hades, I think he'll definitely be in the Florida Derby. Real Macho, I think will be there. Top Connor, fierceness, like you said, and conquest warrior. I, I mean, so if we're assuming Dornock's going to the bluegrass, that's six runners for the Florida Derby. There's, there's going to be more. They'll throw some in there just to throw them in there. But this is, I, I don't know, like, I guess Conquest Warriors, the horse to beat, unless we're going to pretend Fierceness is going to come back and, and go crazy, which he might. I mean, yeah, Dornick being out of it, Victory Avenue, 
can't pick him to win that race. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess. Like, he probably be the second choice, though, still. Fierceness will probably be the favorite, right? I would think so. Yeah. I mean, just. And we saw last year, we've seen, you know, obviously the Florida Derby is a is a big time race because you have mm-hmm. typically Todd Pletcher and, and that brings in the, his best horse really for this race. And so mm-hmm. Fierceness seems to be that horse. Like he is just such a all or nothing. We've said it all along. He could be the favorite of the Kentucky Derby and he could be out of it completely. And neither one of them is going to surprise me. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's, I think, I think for odds for the, for the Derby, I think you kind of want the fierceness to romp because I think it's like, okay, if he romps, he's going to be the favorite and we, we have evidence that he doesn't show up sometimes <laughs> so we can play against him. I don't know though. I really don't know what will happen with him. I, he's, he's such a hit or miss. I, I, to me, it's like, what? what was his excuse last time out? And again, I know people are going to say, well, what was his excuse in the champagne? I, I don't, I just hate the back and forth with this horse. And he's one of the, he's the worst type of horse. Cause you just never know what he's going to do. You know? I mean, you just think of the list and I, I mean, I'll just give you a, a handful of horses over the last, you know, say 10, to, 10 to, I guess about 10 years, but you know, orb, you know, went on to win, right? Nyquist always dreaming. One of those is Pletcher Audible ran really well mm-hmm. in, in that year, um, 2018. Uh, Maximum Security, you know, <laughs> was running so good at that point. Mm-hmm. Won the race, just got DQ'd. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tis Law, that was a different thing um, that year of 2020. But mm-hmm. known agenda, and then the last two, Wida Barrio and Forte. You know, Forte was the favorite of the Derby, scratched uh, the morning of. You know the the second the winner of the race ended up finishing second uh, in that race, Mage, and so it's just such a productive race. Yep. It it just truly is. Is that a factor of who's running them in that race or the race itself? Like, is it because if you look at it, it's like Todd Pletcher or like one of these, like the Service or the Doug O'Neill or someone like that that or Orb with Shug. Hey, maybe this is an Orb horse, right? This year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I've kind of compared to where he kind of felt like he was just kind of coming late into the game. But, you know, it, other than those, like those are the kind of trainers or Todd Pletcher. Right. And it yeah. definitely feels like that's what it is this year. It's yeah. it's Suge with kind of the now horse or it's Todd Pletcher and fierceness. You know? I think overall, when you look at this race this year, this these uh, series of races and the probables for this race right now, it shows you Pletcher's weak because Pletcher, whether he wins at in Florida or loses in Florida, usually his better horses are right there at Gulfstream. He, he looks weak this year, you know, and just look at the entries that he's had in these races. And it's like, oh boy, he hasn't had much, you know, well, well hell, they didn't, he couldn't even get one to the gate in the last one. Right. So um, it's it to me, like he's a kind of the top dirt trainer, as a blanket statement on that East coast there. And so when he doesn't have much, this is kind of what you're left with and we don't have a mage, you know? So last year you have mage and Forte and they battled it out for a couple of races there. And now we don't have that. And we're left with fierceness who is either going to run off the screen or, or be off the board. And you don't really know. And then you got conquest warrior, but he has proven nothing as far as what we see right here. Uh, you know, as far as stakes is what I'm talking about. So I don't know. And yeah, I mean, Tuscan sky is a horse that could run here. He also could run in, in Louisiana. He could run in the wood deterministic shoddy mentioned he's listed like three or four different places. He could show up here. So I, to me, it's open. It's, it's open for somebody to take. If you don't believe fierceness is going to run well and you've got a horse, this is a good place to send them. Yeah. I was, I'll, yeah. I think we should definitely preface with that too, is like, let's, let's make sure you guys remember too, that like, this is you know March 14th and, yeah. and and we saw it last year a lot it's it seems like it's going to be that way this year too where we may not know you know Dornick might run this race you know like they may pivot and decide yeah. hey we're going to run here like it, it, there seems to be a lot of shuffling um the last 
you know, last year and this year with, with horses last minute, you know, changing plans and, you know, especially with horses coming off the trail or, you know, whatever. So it's like, I, I just, this is what we know now, but I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these horses go in different routes. Mark, mm -hmm. isn't that so true? Like Halterman, what if I would have told you that <laughs> the horse that won the Florida Derby in 2022 would later finish 16th in the Derby, second in the Ohio Derby, seventh in the Haskell, fifth in the Pennsylvania Derby, third in the Cigar Mile, and then win the Breeders' Cup Classic in 2023. I mean, it's racing. Life comes at you fast in this game. <laughs> like you, you, you can go down and you can go up fairly quickly. <laughs> just, uh, no, just insane. Just insane. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go to, oh, uh, I think just based off of what we know now, I mean, it is a productive, I think I'll still go under. I, I, I would go under based on what we know now. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I think either, even though like logically, I, I, I feel like it should be over, but Probably that's not. the list that go, comes in. I just can't imagine it being over. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Let's go to the, uh, the Arkansas Derby. We gotta we gotta assume, right, that I mean he didn't do it for the rebel and it kind of surprised us all. He's Bob Baffert has to send somebody to the Arkansas Derby, right? Yeah, I, he has to. He's got May Moon, Muth, and Imagination, right? That's kind of his three. So I would think one or two stay home for Santa Anita and one comes to Arkansas. You know, Muth was rumored to go to the Rebel. He didn't show up, and that maybe this is the one. Uh, so Baffert will have May Moon, Muth, Imagination, one or two of the Coach Prime, Shotty's mentioned. I, I don't know what's what's going on with him, but sure, he's in there. So maybe two come here and two stay uh, at Santa Anita. So you have the Baffert entries, most likely. You got Mystic Dan. Um, you probably got just steel again for Lucas time for truth for Moquette stronghold who won the Sunland Derby. He's interesting. Deterministic is probable possible for all these. So he's on the list Northern flame. And that's kind of it right now. So let's pretend Baffert sends smooth. Let's just say Muth. He wins. I think right i mean timberlake is supposedly going to the bluegrass so mm -hmm. i think baffert steals a lot of derby points here in this one i think bob could send in twat too if he wanted to and and take the top two spots really i mean it, it's by the way is isn't rodney a coach prime guy yes it's rodney where is this horse and i'm listen i'm asking from a from an owner of the horse fantasy owner but still right. sure. it's the same thing same um thing. Where the where where the hell is he? Because he's the workout machine. He works out every week. Yeah, and he works looks great in every work. He works with imagination. He works with all of the, the the good ones, and he runs right there with them. And then the entry boxes come, and they go, and he's not there. So where is he? Uh -huh. uh, but anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, I'm. I I think Bob's gonna steal points here. Mm -hmm. uh, I has to, I, I, I because like I don't know maybe Mystic Dan's the real deal. You know, that could be, but I mean, stronghold, I think we kind of know what he is. He's not bad, but he's not great. I mean, I, he's not going to beat if Muth is like good and ready to go and runs a big race. I don't think stronghold can beat him. So I, yeah, I, I, I think he's going to steal points here in this one for sure. And so horses on the bubble, I know we're going to be talking about the bubble coming up on Sunday, but horses on the bubble, they're rooting for, for Baffert in this spot. Yeah, and it, but it also it's scary for a lot of these horses that are on the bubble too because even it, it could be like Mystic Dan running out of the money would be not shocking at all. Mm -hmm. um, but like Caesar Gray, like what if that horse gets second or third? You know, like some one of these horses could possibly sneak up there for a piece of this thing. You know, it would would not surprise me at all if Ron Moquette got us like a second place finish or a third place finish. You know what I mean? And just had enough. Like we've seen that before where he yeah. gets a horse in based off of second and thirds. Yep. So it, it definitely is a scary race, but like you said, I think everybody's rooting for Bob Baffert. If you are on the bubble, right. For sure. You're rooting for those points to be stolen. You you want him out of there, you know, yep. hopefully he brings two of them. 
and 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 he and he steals the top two points because yep. if that happens, that's that would be a huge plus for anybody on the bubble. Yep, a hundred percent. But I'm with you. Whoever I'm at the point now, so I guess it's easy under, right? It's an easy under. Uh, if he if Baffert shows up with horses, it's under. Yeah. If, if under two and a half, yeah. Yeah, he's looking good. He's feeling good. Running good. Yeah, he does all. He does all the good. He just doesn't run. That's that's the problem with Dennis for him. Um, good, good, uh, good draft pick for me, by the way. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's well, go to the week after. Uh, mm -hmm. The final week, the the main event, for so to speak, the Wood, the Bluegrass, and the Santa Anita Derby. Let's just go with the Wood here. Um, you know, the Aqueduct Series is is kind of a joke for the most part when it comes to uh, producing legit Derby horses, but the Wood is different. The Wood can bring in some nice horses. What's the Wood look like to you? Well, it just depends on who shows up. I, I think, you know, deterministic, I really like. He's a, a possible Tuscan Sky. This is kind of, I kind of think this is where Tuscan Sky is going to show up, honestly. So I, I, if I had to predict, I think this is where. So I, I, he's on there. Just a touch is here. Uncle Heavy, domestic product may show up here. Uh, BU, after breaking the maiden, may show up here. El Grande O, Captain Idea, Deposition. That's kind of who, who's listed. Um, and again, these lists are, are very tedious. Who knows, right? But mm, yeah. I, I think this is one to watch. I think this is kind of under the radar. I, I would not toss. A lot of times you can go to the Wood Memorial and go, yeah, it was okay, but I don't think they'll win. I would keep an eye on this because this, this Tuscan Sky Horse might be okay. Uh, deterministic, I think might be really good. But again, it's all these horses we're talking about in every race. It's like we need to see another race. We need to see more from them. This has some candidates to me. But if you if, if just looking at the list, and it's all like other than I think El Grando is like they're all possible. They're not none of them are probable. But I right. guess Uncle Heavy might be. But point of that is if you could somehow get domestic product, Tuscan Sky, and deterministic all in the race. That's going to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. I, I think that it could, you know, I don't know if it's going to produce the winner, but this year, who knows? I, but really with all three of those I mentioned, like you said, you got to see that one more race from them. You got to mm -hmm. figure out. I don't think like, I don't really like domestic product, but Tuscan sky and deterministic, I think could be pretty good. And that one more race could, could kind of prove that. Mm -hmm. I I agree. I, I I think it. I think this race is going to be loaded with, okay, maybes. Okay, maybes. And and honestly, when the, when the races are loaded like that, there's usually like one or two be like, okay, good. And the rest of them is like, oh, they're not very good, right? Yeah. So, no, I mean, this year all the maybes have sucked. So <laughs> hopefully we don't get that, you know, and El Grande O wins. But there seems to be some decent talent. Yeah, I mean, domestic product can go all day. It's just he goes pretty slow all day. That's that's the that's the concern. But yeah, again, like if he wins and looks good, is is he five to one on Derby Day? I don't know if he's five to one. Depends on again. It's so much depends on these other races. But yeah, you got to think like it, it kind of depends too. What because there's always like the it's always like Derby Day if Todd has a handful of horses in, which is pretty common these days it's always like okay that's the that's the best todd pletcher horse so that's how it's going to be bet right and then mm -hmm. corresponding from there on so it kind of depends to me what like what fierceness does mm -hmm. you know what some of the a couple of these other pletcher horses do if he if fierceness wins i don't think tuscan sky could do anything to be that low of a price but if fierceness bounces and doesn't run well again and Tuscan Sky wins. I yeah, I definitely think that horse because that would be become like okay, that's the Pletcher horse. You know, yep. that's the one. So I think that will have a factor. Yep, I think he's going to get bet hard if he wins this this race. The Wood, I really do. Now, again, like I said, but if Fierceness romps, romps and runs on a triple digit buyer, well, people are going to just go, well, hey, he's better than the rest of them. Whatever happened, happened. They got him right, and he'll be the favorite. So. But Tuscan Sky is going to be a horse that takes money if he wins. No question. 
All right, let's go to, I think, the race I'm most excited. It, and, it, and it's a reason why, because we, we're, we, you and I are trying to go to this every year now. The wood, the bluegrass. Yeah. Uh, sandwich there between the Wood Memorial and the Santa Anita Derby. The bluegrass shaping up Halsterman uh, to be a really good race this year. A lot of answers, I feel like, are going to come out of this thing. What's the field look like? Yeah, this is going to be really interesting to see how this shapes up. So domestic product is also listed in the bluegrass. We'll kind of see which one he chooses. Epic ride. They've kind of talked about door knock. Another one, maybe Florida Derby, maybe here. Timberlake seems like uh, bluegrass just a touch. But both of those, uh, you know, wood or bluegrass. Tuscan Sky, wood or bluegrass. <laughs> you know, uh, de deterministic. Another one mentioned. May Moon is mentioned. Muth is mentioned. But the big one to me, door knock, Sierra Leone. Those two are definitely going to be there, and Timberlake. I think all three of those will definitely be there, with Encino also coming over as well. And so you've got you know, some real headliners here, but the depth of the field should be there. It's going to just depend on who goes where. But I think that rematch between Sierra Leone and Doorknock, it's probably going to happen there, and this will be the race where we really learn a lot about those two horses, hopefully. You know, it's interesting to see Muth on the list. I, I, I It seems unlikely. But at the same time, you got you remember last year with the Lexington. Yep. He brought in Arabian Night or Arabian Lion. And uh, you know, horse ran really well. But like mm -hmm. uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe he could maybe. um bring a horse like that in if he wanted to split up, you know, all three of them. You know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, to me, this is like this is such a big race. Yeah. Because Sierra, like, I just feel like everyone is like, okay, well, Timberlake, yeah, everyone is like, he was okay, but that wasn't very good. That was a terrible race. And then it's like, what is he? What is what is Timberlake? What is Sierra Leone? Yeah. What is, if you want to say deterministic, if he runs in the race or whatever, like, there's just so many of these horses that are, have won their last race, even domestic product, if he were to show up here that have won their last race that have looked really good, but you're like, I still don't know what it is, what that horse is. This is such a big race to answer those questions. It's also going to be a really cool kind of buildup because we're going to know what those other, what happened obviously in those other races, the day of this one. So you, you kind of got that feeling of, okay, there's going to be a kind of a leader in the clubhouse, hopefully, so to speak. And it's like, okay, now we have the wood and we got the bluegrass. Sandy to Derby is kind of a scratch this year. So you got the wood and the and the bluegrass. It's like, okay, the bar has been set. Now let's see if anybody can jump over that bar, right? And and there are so many prospects that are stakes winners in here that it's that, that you're like, yeah, they're they're good, but are they great? This is where you this is kind of the coming out party of I just stamp myself as the Kentucky Derby horse. Or it disappoints and we got to go elsewhere, but it, this does feel like the main event of the whole thing. I have a, we'll, we'll talk about the sanity derby the next, but it's kind of a pointless race really for the derby yeah. because of the Bob Baffert situation. But do you think, I just thought of this. Do you think the Kentucky Derby winner this year is going to win his final prep? Mm, what a what a great question with an impossible answer. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll put it out. I'll pose it out there for the chat as well. So, OK, this is how I, I really think it's going to go. And people are going to be like, this is that was a crazy comment you just made based on this pile of shit we've seen so far. <laughs> I think the Derby is going to the winner will be the favorite. Because my theory is somebody in this pile of crap we've got the last three weeks is going to be who we kind of thought he was, right? Going to run that race to make you go, oh, he's just better than the rest of these. Because it's it's right there, right? If a horse steps up and runs a huge race, they're going to be better than most everybody else. So, yeah, yeah I think I really believe... <laughs> stupidly probably <laughs> in my heart of hearts somebody's gonna stamp themselves we're gonna see a race that goes <laughs> okay that's a derby horse <laughs> yeah shoddy wants to know next week's powerball numbers right. as well since i asked the impossible question um if it gabe says if fiercest wins the florida derby he's winning the kentucky derby look kind of a looney tunes comment in my opinion because when has that horse ran two good races in a row right 
I get the theory of if he runs like he did in the Breeders' Cup in the Florida Derby, he'll win the Florida Derby by probably 20 links. So I get the theory of, okay, now he's the horse. But I don't know how you can confidently say he's going to put two together like that. But I will say, to sort of Gabe's point, is that if he were to win the Florida Derby, he becomes an impossible task in the Kentucky Derby. A billion percent. And he becomes the favorite without a doubt. So yeah. now you're dealing with a favorite, Todd Pletcher, who has ran, if you're assuming he does, if he runs well in the Florida Derby game, he's ran three races that could all probably win the Kentucky Derby. Two, definitely, I'm assuming. Definitely. And he's the favorite, like I said, to Todd Pletcher. And you have 0, 0.0 trust in him getting it done. I, I wouldn't blame anybody. Problem. If we're assuming he's going to dominate the Florida Derby, which I think is not something you should assume based on everything I've heard. He's not going to be my pick in the Florida Derby. I want to make that clear. However, if he does a Breeders' Cup type thing, I can't blame anybody for betting fiercest in the Kentucky Derby because when you're going to look at that form, you're going to go, well, this seems pretty simple. This horse right here has ran two races that are way better than everybody else, mm -hmm. right? I get it. Go for it. Not going to talk anybody off of it. I on think the, he is dicey. On the flip that. side, if you don't see anything, again, it's all assumptions. If you assume he wins the, the Florida Derby and really does it in any fashion, but does it fairly well. I, on the flip side, I would not bet him in the Kentucky Derby just because I don't trust him. But mm -hmm. again, on the flip side of that, you could argue, okay, well, and assuming no one runs like any major, ma like huge performances out of all these, like nothing that really stands out crazy. You would at least say, okay, well, I have the horse that has ran multiple races links better than anybody else in the field yeah you would have that to go off of now do you trust it will he get it done that's obviously a whole other thing but you would have multiple examples and multiple races where he's ran off the screen that could beat this field easily so, so that i totally agree totally agree this is the thing i this is not accurate in my opinion i don't think he needs the lead I think he needs the a margin a, a nice marginal lead when he hits the stretch. Because if you go watch his Breeders' Cup, at no point was he ahead in, in the early stages of the race. He was in second. Go watch it. He was in second. But when he turned the corner, he was ahead of him a good amount. I don't think he wants to fight with other horses. I, and I think that's where it comes. So to me, it's like... I don't think I don't think he's a speed horse that absolutely has to have the lead to win. I think he just needs to be clear of everybody when the real running starts. Yeah. I and think honestly, he... go back and watch the Holy Bull. He's half the size of the winner. He might just be scared of other horses because he's a small horse. I think that's possible when you look at him. He is tiny. Look at this, Rodney. We'll let, we will let you on the, sh if he wins and Encino wins, you can donate a thousand dollars to the channel. We'll let you have like a minute. Yeah. Before, before I'm sure we're going to have to take you off, but Hey, there you go. Encino. No, he is a tiny horse. He's yeah. tiny. You look at him compared to what, what was that dipshit? The one, uh, Hades, Hades. Yeah. He was tiny and he gets in. And you think about it. If there's 19 other horses in the race, a, a smaller horse, that's going to get discouraged. Yeah, it's it's a dicey situation. There's the talent is there, clearly. Frustrating horse has to be a frustrating horse to, to to train and own really because, you know, like again, and we'll go on the next race. But the last thing I'll say about him, the owner, who is say what he is, but he's owned thousands of horses. Mm -hmm. Pletcher, who is a Hall of Famer, who's won multiple Kentucky Derbies. They didn't even know what he would do in the Breeders' Cup. They they had no idea. They yep. literally said after the race, we didn't, you know. And honestly, if it wasn't Ripoli, he may not even been in the race, dude. Right. Like, 
Yep. Because he, he's going to push that envelope a little bit more for than other train other owners would for Pletcher. So the point of that being is, who knows? Right. He's been that kind of horse. All right, let's go. Uh, okay, I forgot to do the wood over under and bluegrass over under the wood. I, I bet it's over. I'm gonna go under in the wood. Okay. And I'll go over in the bluegrass. Yeah, over in the bluegrass. Yeah. But I could see how you would go over in the wood too. Yeah, uh, I mean, again, it depends on who ends up in that race too. And a lot, a lot of this is we gotta, we still. I don't think you and I fully have our mind wrapped around somebody's got to be in these, these starting gates. Right. So <laughs> when it's all said and done, you're going to look back and you're like, wow, there was four out of race X. How and it's like, well, somebody had to run, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. Sandy to Derby. This one seems kind of like a moot point just because it's like, it's Bob Baffert. And then it, what it's been the circuit the whole year where, Bob Baffert and then a couple other also's and Bob Baffert. Now you have no nisos, but I guess that leaves you gotta assume, like, let's just say like imagination stays out of Santa Anita. He stays there. May Moon runs in the Arkansas Derby and Muth runs in the bluegrass. I'm just throwing that out there. But is that what he is that what you kind of envision? Or do you could you see a case where it's like Muth and imagination run in the Sandy Derby. I think he'll put three in the race, and I don't know what three it'll wind be. Me up. Yeah, I got to put wind me up in that one. Too. Wind me up, Coach Prime, Imagination, Muth, May Moon. He'll Maybe probably keep them. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Let's just put those five in it and forget it. That would be hilarious, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, yeah, no, this isn't a derby prep. It hasn't been. Th- th- these races haven't been all year. I mean, he's been winning them with his non headline horses. Well, I guess that's not true. He had nice, uh, nice win, but the last one, imagination's probably his third best and one. Um, yeah, look, I a stronghold is the only Southern California ho- horse not trained by Baffert where it's like, yeah, he he's okay, but I don't think he'll stay. So then what's, what's even left? I mean, it very well could be all Baffert seriously. Well, you look at the probables or the possibles, anyways. It's well, nice is out, but imagination, May Moon and Muth, Coach Prime's not on there, but you could you could imagine that he'll be possible with that with that horse as well. Stronghold is the only non Baffert listed on the list there, and again, he may like Stronghold's also listed Arkansas Derby and other places, and I I think Stronghold's connections probably are sitting there going, why would we run here? when we could go somewhere else and it's easier, <laughs> you know? So I think they'll go away. Well, if you, if you are a horse or a tr- an owner trying to get into the Derby and, and you're looking at, you need like, this is the last chance, right? And you're mm-hmm. looking at two Bafferts, maybe more that are in this race, and especially like capable ones. You're like, well, now all of a sudden I get third and I get 25 points. Uh-huh. And that's the best case scenario, you know? And so I need more, I need, I need more points, you know, I need to get in. And so it's like, yeah, there might be a situation where it's, 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 it's so bad that it's just Bob, it's just Bob Baffert horses. It's, it's possible. I mean, I, there so probably be a couple. The, where, where does the line, I, I have a good question. I, and I've talked to people about this from the last time from the San Felipe, but it's like, where is the line? How how much does it get skewed purse and derby points? You know, where where does that lie? Because it's still a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar race. Do you do you do you run horses in the race? No, like, hey, you know, we can still get third. We had forget the derby, like this is not our derby horse. This is not a good horse. You know, it's not gonna be a horse that could go to the derby anyway, so maybe we can get third. Yeah. Or is it all chips all in on derby points? Well, probably the second. Yeah, I, I, I like. I don't think anybody's shipping in. Let's put it that way. And so then, then you have to just look like, okay, locals. Who do we got? That's not a Baffert, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't. I I don't see any way it's going to be any kind of field to make anybody excited for the Derby. It's a great pre- Preakness prep. I think that's what it is. 
It's uh yeah. And now that you have no Nisos, that sucks because yeah. like I think he was he would have been fun to get into the Preakness. Yes. Yeah. And and have whoever ends up winning the Kentucky Derby have to face that monster mm-hmm. in the Preakness. But mm-hmm. maybe it's maybe it's uh May Moon, you know, maybe he could be the kind of the take the because I mean I think with imagination it's like, yeah, he's nice, but he's not like he's not a typical Bob Baffert monster, you know, hmm. he's, he, he's good. He, yeah. I mean, he, he definitely benefited from no, you know, having no, no competition in the last one. Right. Right. Everyone's scratched out of it, but, uh, right. I think he's a nice horse. Uh, I don't know that he's capable of winning the Preakness. So it's just like, if it had been nice to have nice in there, but, uh, I mean, cause nice is out. What for, they said 30 days, right? Mm-hmm. But that basically takes him off of, I guess, Bob could probably get him to the Preakness, maybe. Doubt it. But that'd be tough. You're 30, 30 days off, and then you got to start back training. I mean, it, I, it's not impossible, but, I mean, you're you're asking him to run, you know, that race in February, and then his next start is the Preakness. It's, I mean, there's no chance for a prep or anything like that. Right. So I don't think they'll do that. And, and, and. Bob typically with that kind of kind of I thought with that kind of horse that he believes I, I assume he believes is is highly highly talented mm-hmm. he will get that horse ready for the summer you know yeah that horse will be completely backed off and and obviously yeah. got getting you know get right hopefully and then yeah, yeah. you know be be pointed toward the Haskell or something like that so yep. So I guess the, the easy ones under here, Sandy the Derby. So and I don't even know the Lexington. I mean, I, I is there any probables for the Lexington? Uh not that. Let me see. Not that I've seen. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. I couldn't get on it. Uh, Horse Racing Nation locked up my computer earlier, so I have to do this <laughs> on my phone. Uh, the Wine Steward. And sees the gray. Sees the gray will not be in the Lexington. He's going to run in the bluegrass <laughs> for sure. I'd say. Yeah. So the wine steward would be the one. I mean, like you said last year, you had a nice one with with first mission, um, and the Arabian Lion. Two horses that, well, Arabian Lion didn't he romp in the next race at the undercard of the Preakness, right? Yes. Yeah. And we're all like, wow, you should have ran in the Preakness. What was he doing? And then, of course, first mission would have been one of the favorites. Uh, right. He was one of the favorites until he scratched. And so maybe the Lexington is not necessarily going to produce much for the Derby, but could definitely produce for the Preakness. Yeah, and I would just, you know, keep in mind, I think if we did a show, we wouldn't even have talked about first mission to the Lexington at this time, you know. So that things will develop for that race. Yeah, because at that point of the game, you start seeing the path for these. Like again, like you said, like we wouldn't have, we wouldn't, wouldn't even thought of that. Yeah, at this point last year, but like, is at that point you start factoring in, okay, the Peter Pan, and then towards the Belmont, and then you know the Lexington for the Derby or the Lexington for the Preakness. So like now they're like working backwards from the Preakness and the Belmont at that point. Right. Yep. And, and so there's a lot of different factors. Like right now, it's it's kind of Derby or bust, and so you'll start seeing a lot of these horses back off and kind of repivot towards you know another another goal but yeah i mean yeah, I, listen the over under for the the lexington is like two and a half for mcpeak right how, right yeah you know, how many horses he'll have in it lucas is probably one and a half for the race with someone yeah. so uh you gotta imagine that's kind of the group you'll have yep yep all right um oh, i was gonna ask you what was i gonna ask gonna ask you a question about Man, I had a good question. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna save that. <laughs> I'm gonna save that for the end of our conversation." Say, say something. What you know? Finish this off, and let me let me see if I can think of it. Well, yeah, that's the that's the wrap. And let's think, or let's hope that we we start to see, like, uh, you know, I know there's Doorknock fans. Hopefully, he runs a big race. I know there's Sierra Leone fans. Hopefully, they, you know, he runs a big race. Maybe, of course, like Hall of Fame can bounce back, like. There's forever young. There's got to be somebody out there that makes us excited for the, for the Derby from a fan standpoint. You know, I know the betting is always going to be there, but from, Hey, this is a big time horse and we may see something. And, and now with the injury of Nisos, 
huh, the Preakness uh, doesn't look quite as scary for the Derby winner. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to shape up, guys. These next couple of weeks, we're going to start to learn uh, a lot. And I think you know, you guys are going to start, uh, myself included, Halsman, like, are going to start kind of finding that horse that you're you're drawn to and and you want to kind of back. And so, if if I've learned anything, if we learn anything over the years, like, just you know, I would say let let's try to put a whole body of work. <laughs> Yeah, into a horse uh, as they get into the Kentucky Derby and not just one race. Um, so I think with these last preps, it needs to be served as more of a confirmation than it is a like an all in all be all kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. like for me, it, it's always easy to go back and, and it's, it's helpful, but use the, these last preps to kind of help kind of confirm um, or even, you know, reject like you're thinking. If you thought a horse was pretty good and they don't run super well and that's this last preps and it's like probably it's time to stop chasing when it comes to the kentucky derby so we'll find out a lot what you got i was gonna say i i don't get married to anybody in this game that's <laughs> that's a lesson learned you know i i would not be I mean, married to anybody going in these last three weeks or in general i mean just in, yep. in life <laughs> well for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's a, that's a look at the upcoming uh, final stretch here as we head into the last 100-point races for the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I had a good question, a good comment. I wanted to, I was like, I'll save that for the end, and then now I can't even think of it. So I'm sure it wasn't that good then. <laughs> all right, guys, it's all time we have. Check us out at racingdudes.com for our free picks and, of course, our premium selections on our products page. Click the Get Racing Dudes Premium button at the menu at racingdudes.com to learn more. Uh, I assume Halterman, we will have a Louisiana Derby betting Bible next week. Yep. We'll go Louisiana Derby, Florida Derby with Arkansas Derby coverage, obviously. And then we will do bluegrass. Uh, that will be the next three weeks. So uh, three straight weeks and maybe even Lexington. I know we did one last year. We'll see how that goes. So three to four straight weeks of betting Bibles. Yeah, and even if we cover, like Halterman said, if we cover uh, one particular, like you'll have the the prep, you know, the Jeff Ruby, uh, for instance, will be in Louisiana. Like it'll just be that race. Like we'll cover all the preps uh, within every betting Bible, even if it's not at that particular track. So yep. be on the lookout for that. If you are a subscriber to any of our premium products, you, you know, the monthly subscriptions start at $70. If you do subscribe to those, you get the betting Bibles for free. So this is a good time to be a subscriber because obviously all the kinds of, you know, the preps we have coming up, the betting Bibles that are upcoming, of course, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness and the Belmont, big time races. You're getting the value in those alone. If you're just buying the betting Bibles for, say, 40 bucks, it just takes two of them and, and you got your money's worth and you get a whole month's picks as well for that 70 bucks. So mm -hmm. now would be a good time to go over to RacingDudes.com and become a subscriber to any of our premium products. We're on Twitter at Racy underscore dudes, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can find all episodes of Blinkers Off by visiting our podcast page, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. If you're watching us on, on Twitter, you can go to our YouTube page, subscribe, get all kinds of content there, uh, or just on our website at uh, racingdudes.com. The Magic Mike Show will be on later today. I don't know. I what are they doing today? Are They're they going to Oakland uh, for the pick five, and it will be uh, Nick Seavers filling in today because Samich is at uh, the NHC. Oh, yeah. Good luck to Samich this weekend at the mm -hmm. NHC. Due to bet, when will you guys be going? We will be going, uh, let's see, due to bet daily, we'll be coming in uh, 15 minutes, and then due to bet sports, we'll be going at 5 o'clock central. And finally, I saw a question earlier. When will you and Papa Dude be giving your uh, March Madness type picks? Yeah, we'll probably do Dude Do Bet Sports on Monday next week um, and, and do the whole bracket on Monday. Uh, the, the show is Sunday, and so that'll give us time to kind of fill one out. So I would say by Monday, uh, we'll do a Monday show next week instead of a Thursday show for Dude Do Bet Sports. Do you have anybody that you're kind of like similar to what we just talked about with the derby like are you ha do you have anybody that you're kind of leaning towards i put a future bet on north carolina about two weeks ago so hopefully uh, it's them they've, <laughs> been, they've been playing really well so they've kind of backed it up uh i, I think uconn is 1000 percent the team to beat um so but i think north carolina is is if you go for a little bit of a price i think north carolina makes a ton of sense 
Dennis, four hours of sleep. Come on. I'm, I mean, I'm on four hours of sleep, but, but I, you know, I stayed awake during the show. So <laughs> that's right. Coffee. That's why they make coffee. You go, that's right. Yep. I, uh, today. I feel like, you know, you sleep when you're dead. I, you know, being a dad and, and doing all the, the business and everything, it's just like, man, sleep, sleep comes at, you know, sometimes I sleep for like eight hours. Sometimes I sleep for like four, mm-hmm. three. You get to sleep when you can get to sleep. So, yep, that's right. Um, by the way, I had a question for you. Uh, how is Heather? Because I feel like I have not seen <laughs> or heard her voice in I what seems like maybe a year. Like, is she <laughs> buried in your backyard? Yeah, that's just it. It's just, just uh, she's not around anymore. That's the deal. No, you, <laughs> I you seriously will see have her. Not, she's coming to the bluegrass. So I have not seen or heard from her in so long. I know. Like usually, like she would, she pops in in the, in the background, whether it be on the live or like when you and I are talking beforehand. Yep. I don't even know that she's still there. I bet I could make her talk right now. I could just flip the camera and she would scream and run away. <laughs> so. Is she in the room with you right now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just make sure she can hear. I mean, I tell her hi. Oh, oh. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that you could, go. That could very well be a mannequin arm. I'm just saying. <laughs> she, <Like>. Yeah. <laughs> <She's alive. laughs> that, I, I, I still don't believe it yet. All right. We'll have to I'll find out if she shows up at, <laughs> at the bluegrass or not. I think like, if I flip this camera, she would absolutely die. So I'm not going to do that. It's like weekend at Bernie's. You got Heather like. Walking, yeah. got her tied to her. She's tied to his hip the whole weekend. But it's funny because I told Paul was asking, you know, who else coming. I said Heather, and he's like, "What?" It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, I'm in the same boat. I, I I miss Heather. So it's a sighting. I know, and her, she's like, I don't know why people are happy. I was like, it's weird. Like people like you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We like you. We like her usually better than you. So that's the thing. I, well. That I've noticed. Like I've I've t- I've told you. And I've told. uh Paul and everybody's like, "All right, this is gonna be fun now." It's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. fun now." Dennis yeah. says, "Scream help if if you're not okay." Blink twice, she said, "No, yeah. <laughs> well, they can't see you." So, <laughs> yeah, just just remember, Heather, I'm always here if you need to text me. If you, if, if Paul Trin's <laughs> not treating you well, like if you need to talk, we we can talk about it. So, well, Heather was gonna be a YouTube star with our wrestling show, <laughs> and then then <laughs> then a cat showed up at our door, and we stopped doing it forever. <laughs> It lasted like one episode, didn't it? So that was a good concept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like the day after we did it, a cat showed up at our door and all of our attention went to the cat. So <laughs> I swear, I, I think that it's, it's a cat thing. Like that same thing happened to Taylor, my sister. Like they got, they had some cats show up and next thing, two cats. It's like taking over their life or her Has life, to. anyways. No, no other choice. Has it's to. Literally all like, like they, everything is focused around the cat. Yeah. When we need to be home, when we need to, you know, like feed it and the, everything. So our little trash cat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Cat's still doing well, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. She's, she's around here somewhere. <laughs> Philly still hate her. What's uh no, I mean, I, I think, I think down deep Philly loves her. No, sure. she hates her. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Darby loves Philly. Philly hates Darby. That's that's that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to get out of here. Uh, thanks, for everybody, for tuning in this morning show. It's been fun. It's been uh, – I like doing it in the morning. Well, uh, a lot of you have been in here. A lot of comments and questions. So, appreciate it. Again, remember, this is uh, this is the week, the weekend to kind of, uh, you know, take a breath, kind of get your uh, Derby horse thoughts lined up, and then let it all be erased in the next coming weeks. So, uh all right guys until next time i'm jared welch he is aaron halterman good luck this weekend guys thank you for listening to another episode of blinkers off join our horse racing community at racingdudes.com and follow us on twitter at racing underscore dudes want to make money betting horses bet with the racing dudes